pentatonic voicings, upper structures, hexatonics, fourth voicings, A and B voicings, rootless voicings. Forget all of those for a minute and come with me on a quick little journey. A journey that will transform your sense of harmony. It's just a simple journey to master thirds and sevenths. Hello there, it's Tim Whalen from Whalen Jazz Lessons. And no matter how complicated we go with harmony and voicings, in jazz, it's important to have a total mastery of thirds and sevenths. It's essential. In many ways, it's the foundation. So I'm going to show you some very focused ways to practice and internalize them. So why are the third and the seventh so important? Why is it so important to know these inside and out? Well, in many, many instances, they define the quality of the chord. Let me show you. So let's say I have a C major triad, C, E, G. Okay, what kind of seventh chord is that? Well, obviously it's not because there's only three notes, but you could say it's a major seven. It could also be a dominant seven. It's being defined by the seventh. Minor triad. What kind of seventh chord is it? Well, there's no seventh in it because we can't really know. It could be a minor major seven, it could be a minor seven. Let's flip it a little bit. Let's do one, five, major seven. What kind of seventh chord is that? Our ear might gravitate towards a major seven because it's got kind of an open. Well, it could also be minor because the third is not in here. It could be major or it could be minor. What if we play one five flat seven? It could be dominant. It could be minor seven. But what if I go like this? One, three, seven. That's a major seven chord. We know that immediately because it has a major third and a major seventh, sorry. What if I did this? That is a dominant seventh chord because we have a major third and a flat seven. So the third and seventh tell us what kind of chord it is. If I went like this. That's a major seven chord because that is in there. If I have a real thick, you know, That's in there. If I go, it's a minor seven chord. All the additional notes, they're just color notes. They're just notes to give us more interest and thicker textures. But underneath, you know, here's a pentatonic voicing, like the so what voicing. Okay. Third, seventh. It's in the voicing. Okay, so the third and seventh really define the chord. So if you have a real deep understanding of three and seven, adding notes on top of those two notes makes a lot more sense. Rather than just like, here's a bunch of voicings, learn them and figure it out. If you can see the third and the seventh, it creates so much more um, grounded harmony, it teaches you about voice leading, which we'll get into in a minute here. Something to understand too, harmony is not vertical. What I mean by that is like voicings are vertical, okay? A voicing, that's a vertical voicing. But harmony is horizontal. If you, if you listen to Bach or study Bach chorales, harmony is moving this way. Like the, the chords are, are, are changing like this but the harmony is moving this way. It's moving this way by good voice leading. It's, it's moving notes in small intervals between chords, finding the common tones as you move through the harmony. Thirds and sevenths will help you achieve that in, in a different kind of way, but it's the same idea. Thirds and sevenths can create good voice leading. Learning voicings is so important, but if you can understand these two notes and how they relate between chords, 
Um, it'll open up your sense of what good voice leading sounds like. Before we move on, I want to just talk about the seventh. Let's go stay on C. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the C major scale, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What I want you to get used to seeing is wherever the root is of any, of any chord, right now it's C, think of the seventh this way. The major seventh is simply one half step below the root, any, from, from any root. Okay? The flat seven is two half steps. Major seven, flat seven. And that's anywhere, anywhere on the keyboard. There's a flat seven, major seven, flat seven, major seven. This is to show you that if you're having trouble finding the seventh, which I've found students have trouble with this, where is the seventh in relation to the voicing? Just wherever that root is, major seventh is a half step down, the flat seven is a whole step down. Okay, so what I would recommend you do is go through the circle and just play the root and then play the major seven. E flat. Okay, you could even go to do like that. Play root on the bottom, then the octave, and then go down a half step to the major seven. The other way now is to do the flat sevens. Just two half steps. Same thing with this. It's to get you used to seeing the difference between a flat seven and a major seven. That'll really help if you, if you really can see where the seventh is. Um, it'll help figuring out where to put it when you're putting voicings together. Okay, so we're gonna do this, it's gonna be real simple. For the starting point, we're just gonna play a root in the left hand and two notes in the right hand, the third and the seventh only. So, if we have root here, three, seven, you can even go down an octave, okay? There's your third, the E, seventh, the B. Right off the bat, let's talk about inversions. However many notes there are in a chord besides the root, the root is understood, okay? I'm just dealing with the three and the seven right now. There's only one other way that we can invert this. We have the seventh on the top, the root on the bottom. The other way is to put the third on the top and the seventh on the bottom. I think I said that right. Third on the bottom, seventh on top. One, three, seven from bottom to top. And one, seven, three. So let's talk about the six main chord qualities using thirds and sevenths, and also sixths. We've got major seven. One, three with a major seven. Dominant seven. One, three, flat seven minor seven, one flat three flat seven, minor major seven, one flat three major seven, and then the sixth. We got major six, one, three, six, and then minor six, one flat three, six. So we got major seven, Dominant seven, minor seven, minor major seven, major six, minor six. Now some of these, when you add notes, like here's the, the minor seven, there's only three notes in here, but it could be a minor seven or a minor seven flat five once we add the fifth. But right now we're just focusing on it as a minor seven because those are the only notes in the chord. Minor six, this could be a, a diminished seventh chord if we have a flat fifth in there. But we're gonna keep it just one flat three, 
six, okay? One more time. Major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, minor major seven, major six, minor six. The inversion of that, take the third and bring it up to the top. Same notes, just different order from bottom to top. Major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, minor major seven, major six, minor six. So let's go through these chords. Major seventh. First thing, find the major third. It's just the third of the major scale. Okay? And then take the root above and go down a half step to the seven. Or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, you can play up to the seventh of the major scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, three, seven. Okay? So what I would do, well, let me, let me do this first. Now to get the inversion, the third's on the top. There's your root. It's a half step below the root. One, seven, three. See? One, two, three. There's your root. The seventh is a half step down. So what I would do with these is play these through the circle, uh, just left hand, and then one, and play them parallel through the circle. One, three, seven, 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 one, three, seven. Then do it the other way. One, seven, three. Now let's look at this. On a major chord, the third and the seventh, if you go one, three, seven, it's a perfect fifth between the third and the seventh. If we do one, seven, three, it's a perfect fourth. See that? Perfect fourth, perfect fifth. This is more of a, um, I guess you could say like a closed voicing because it's closer together. And this is more spread. Take this around parallel. Okay, that's major seven. Dominant seven. All we do is we flat the, fit the flat the seventh. Same thing. One, three, flat seven. I always think it's easier to find the third and then find the seventh. One, two, three, then flat seven. That's the inversion. This is a tritone between these two notes. Okay. That's dominant seven. To get the minor seven, it's a flat third and a flat seven. The inversion, third on the top, flat seven. Again, with minor seven chords, same thing as the major, when you have root third seventh, it's a perfect fifth between the third and the seventh. When you have root seven three, it's a perfect fourth. Okay, that's minor seven. Let's go back to... Now to get a minor major seven, we have a minor, a flat third, with a major seven. Remember, half step below the root. This is not a perfect four, it's actually a minor six, but just think flat three, major seven, through the circle. A 
little more dissonant. It's good to get those dissonant sounds in your ear. Now let's, we bring, for the inversion, we bring the third up. Flat three with a major seven. And this is actually a major third between these two, the interval. It's good to see these as many different ways as you can. Definitely more dissonant. Okay, now let's deal with the two sixths. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. It's just the third and the sixth of the major scale. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? The interval between the third and the sixth is a perfect fourth. Three, six. One, three, six of F. F, three, B flat, three, six. E flat, three, six. A flat, three, six. D flat, three, six. G flat, three, six. B, three, six. E, three, six. A, three, six. D, three, six. G, three, six. C, three, six. Okay? The inversion. Third on the top, there's the root. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six on the bottom, third on the top. If, if you want to try to find this, you could do one, two, three half steps, I believe. Or just go six, one, seven, six, or two, three, four, five, six, play up to the six. This is why knowing your major scales and minor scales is so important. If you can figure it out from the scale, it's a lot easier. One, six, three. And that's a perfect, perfect fifth. Can you hear the sound too? You can, you can really hear that sound of the major six. Last one, minor six. One, two, three, flat the third, and a major six. One, flat three, six. Sounds like a minor six to me. Inversion, remember, take the third, just bring it to the top. Okay? So that's all of them. So that's the first way to practice these. I call it practice in parallel. You can practice it parallel. Here's major seven through the circle. You could practice them parallel uh, up and down chromatically. That's is a really good thing to do. Down chromatically. Chromatic is a really nice thing to do because the voicings all kind of look and feel different. You can do them in minor thirds. You could do them really in any interval that you want. Uh, just make sure you get through all 12. The circle of fifths, circle of fourths is always a good thing to always practice this stuff on. So that first way is to practice them parallel. Now let's talk about voice leading. Okay, so there's certain things to notice when we talk about voice leading. We're gonna do this through the circle of fourths because fourth movement is very common in two five ones, five to one resolution, two five one. Okay, so how do we achieve good voice leading? If we're gonna play major sevenths through the circle, we're gonna to try to do this so we move the least amount of notes as we go through the circle. Meaning some notes will stay the same when they become another note of the next chord while another note will move. The key is to see how the moving note moves, to see the interval of the movement. So let's take C major, we're gonna do one, three, seven, okay? The next chord in the circle is F, okay? We have to get to an F major seven. So C major is one, three, seven, E in the B. The third of F is A. 
and the major seventh of S F is E. So to get to the next note, what we do is we take the seventh of this chord and we move it down a whole step and it becomes the third of F major and the seventh stays the same. Look at this movement, one, three, seven. This note moves and becomes the third of B flat. Now the seventh of F moves down a whole step and becomes the third of B flat. E flat. The seventh is moving down a whole step while the third stays the same to become the seventh. back down. Check that out again. Okay. Now the same idea. I'll, I'm going to bring the third up for the other inversion. One, seven, three. It's the same thing. This is still the seventh, even though it's now on the bottom. It's gonna move down a whole step and become the third of F major, while the seventh stayed, the third stayed the same and became the seventh. By the way, in the description, I will have a copy of doing this parallel and through the circle, both inversions for every chord quality for you, completely free. Because, you know, you're my people and I want to take care of you. So go grab that sheet. It's got every chord quality being practiced in these ways. So that was major. Let's do dominant. Okay, one, three, flat seven. This one's actually pretty easy. Dominants, you know, they're such a powerful chord. Because this is a tritone, all that's gonna happen is these two notes are just gonna slither down by half steps as we change chords. Root third seventh becomes root seventh third. B flat seven, E flat seven, A flat seven, D flat seven just moving the voicings down by half steps while the roots change. The other thing to know is when you go through the circle of all these, any of them, root third seventh from bottom to top becomes the opposite, root seventh third. Root third seventh, root seventh third. It's with that with all of them, they keep flipping. Root third seventh, root seventh third. 3rd, 7th, 7th, 3rd, 3rd, 7th, 7th, 3rd. The order changes every time you switch the notes. So that was dominant that way. Put the 3rd on the top, it's the same thing. 1, 7, flat 7, 3. Get used to this movement. It's everywhere in the music we play. Okay? Minor 7. It's the same deal as the major seventh in terms of how the notes move, not the name of the notes, but because we're back to this perfect fifth idea, the seventh will go down a whole step to become the third of the next chord. C minor seven, F minor seven. Okay, third on the top, same deal. The seventh will go down a whole step to become the third while the, while the third stays the same to become the seventh. Okay, so I'm only gonna focus on those three for, the, for this video, but all of them will be on the sheet. I just don't want the video to be too long. Um, but you get the idea. 
how, how we do this. A couple other ways I want you to think about practicing this. I want to talk about just doing these in the left hand. So a good exercise in the left hand, if you have big enough hands to spread the full, I don't. Some people can play, play these all at the same time. I can do some of them, but like, uh, you know, I can't reach the third of D flat major. So this exercise, it's nice. It basically, it's a rhythm of uh, an eighth note and then a dotted quarter or, and tied to a half note, I guess. Yeah. Eighth note, dotted quarter, tied to a half. And what you get is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So it's root, third, seventh. So what I would do is take these through the circle with the voice leading only in the left hand. So if you're gonna do root, seventh, third, to avoid the voicings getting too muddy going down, start on E flat. Okay? Start here and then go through the circle like this. Three, four. Okay, then the second part of this is start on D, root seventh third, and you'll get another set of inversions. your way back to D. Okay? Do that with all, all these chords. And, and you could also double up the rhythm. Maybe instead of a full bar, do them to a bar. Um. This will help get your chops going too. It's a great thing to do. The key with these is just to get them memorized. It's okay to see patterns. It's okay to see the seventh goes down a whole step on major seventh chords or the tritones go down by half step it's okay to see all of that stuff spend time mastering this it'll make such a difference when you start to add notes it's all coming from there you know if i harmonize all in there. Thirds and sevenths, thirds and sixths are all inside of that. That's why I really feely strong, feely? I really feel strongly about spending time on this. So grab that PDF, take some time, use these as a warm up. spend 15 minutes a day, just pick a, pick one chord and work on it through the circle. In a few days, you'll have it together. Just spend some time on it. I really hope this was helpful and we'll see you in the next video. Have a good one. Happy practicing.